like like you'd said you don't know the person they didn't do anything to you it's just some mm-hmm. country another bunch of people way over there somewhere on planet earth and now you're picking up arms and putting on armor and flying jets and dropping bombs is there an objective way of analyzing these kinds of things to determine if they're truly just or not no (laughs) (laughs) all right so let's say one person goes out and murders another person well there's really nothing you can do about that unless you're a god you can't bring that person back i mean sure you can do other stuff somebody can try to make amends or pay back something even though money doesn't equal lives i don't i never understood that one right say somebody busts into your house in the middle of the night your first instinct of course with all of your guns would be they're going to kill me i better shoot them first you initiate force on them all they've done well, is no, enter no, your no. property no, no, not breaking, force. entering your house is is initiating the force. That, no, that you, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. That's, so that's a justification. It, no, no, no. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Still affecting people that weren't even born at the time. It makes you wonder, like, how it ever got justified in, like, like how how is all that shit somehow justifiable in a nice little package? Like, oh, I'm just following orders. do this kitchen sink my microscopy casey rochford is me you are the viewer and you viewer should like and share this video and subscribe to the channel and then there's something that's shaped like the at&t thing like a, a, a bell or something um you know, dingling click on that and it'll dingling Whenever we put something up, which is pretty often. <laughs> well, you know, and a lot of people haven't even heard of AT&T or Bell. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I remember the, the AT&T You Will commercials. Those are awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm Eric Rosenblatt. And uh, yeah, Casey and I, we write music. And, well, there's going to be one of our songs at the end of the episode. Time stamp down there if you really don't want to listen to us jibber-jabber and you want to just skip ahead to the music. Well, there you go. That's your golden ticket to to Mm -hmm. the music. Uh, Yeah, so uh, what do you think, Casey? What what should we talk about today? Well, maybe a a bit of philosophy. Uh, Those are always good ones. Mm-hmm. go in a million directions but um i was uh talking to my my uh, fiance about uh you know like east germany west germany unifying and there is this this kind of question of of who will hold whom accountable for these crimes against humanity when they were technically legal under the laws of the uh regime at the time and you know it's like it's like who who really does like i don't know uh pick right and wrong and should morals supersede laws Ooh, but, man, but then like that's... who's picking the morals you know like well i think i, I just you know, initially I can say morality is subjective. It's personal, but there's a lot of things that most people generally agree on. Like, okay. Transgression against another human, like violence, uh, force, 
uh, things like that, like unwelcomed kinds of things. Uh, those aren't right. Taking stuff from people, killing people, uh, violating their bodies in one way or another. That Most people will agree that that's wrong. Um, and I, I think I did a really early minute microscopy about kind of that very thing about how like just because it's a law doesn't mean that it's right mm -hmm. like it's mor morally correct um and that goes into something we well we had been previously discussing like whether we had actually covered this topic or not but uh i was just following orders yeah. that's the the common excuse that people say for the most heinous atrocities doing right. the most terrible things like look at all of the stuff that happened in, in the 40s with Germany, uh, with all the people they didn't like. Yeah. Um, I mean, when following camp. orders kills, you know, like, I mean, you, you said just a moment ago that most people just generally agree that's bad, yet we totally are okay with it if it's war. Well, you know, like, yeah, well, and there have actually been studies that have shown why people look past their own internal uh, kind of moral compass, essentially. And usually it's authority, a sense of authority. If an authority figure tells you to do a thing, you're a lot more likely to do it. And then couple that with a, a group of people who are also doing the same thing. And now you're the outlier. You don't want to speak out against it. So you just kind of participate and eventually it becomes you. It mm -hmm. becomes who you are and you're willing to kind of look past that. I mean, that's one of the both good and bad things about the human mind is, is our ability to kind of shift ourselves into different mindsets, uh, like uh, different realities uh, in a sense. So, so it's like, well, okay, you know, me and my family, my, my normal life, I would never do these things. But when I'm when I put that soldier's uniform on or the police uniform on, you know, or, or whatever, I put that suit on to go to work for the CIA. Well, all of a sudden everything changes and you're willing to do stuff you would never do in any other context mm -hmm. um, because, well, authority and the group, like the, the whole entire group is contributing to it. And I feel like a, in a lot of cases too, it's like, it's not like the others contributing. It's like each person is a party to that in their own way. Yeah. And all it takes is a certain threshold to be met where there's enough people in your uh, peer group to, to, to be able to pressure you into believing a thing. I mean, it's almost kind of like religion in a way where you're, if you're surrounded by a bunch of religious zealots all day and all night, well, eventually you're just going to kind of become one too. Yeah. I mean, in a recent episode, we were talking about this because um, I asked, I mean, this whole idea is kind of irreducible complexity, you know, mm -hmm. like who watches the watchers kind of questions or um, who initiates force. You know, I think people will look for any excuse to, um, clear their conscience of what they want to do to somebody else or what they have done. Yeah. Uh, but like, they'll look for any excuse and be like, well, uh, they clearly did this bad thing to me. So it was okay that I squished them, you know? Like <laughs> well, yeah. And, and a rule book is, is probably one of the easiest ways to do that. It's like, oh, these are the official rules of the game, right? So mm -hmm. I, I did everything according to the playbook. Like, I, I didn't do anything wrong. The Bible is another good example. Like, people think, oh, if I just adhere to this doctrine, like, everything's going to be fine, um, which well, multiple texts, uh, religious texts, have some pretty questionable things in them um, that are seemingly okay because the authority figure uh, like the god in, in in the those books uh says oh you need to do this or smiles upon you as you do those things or something uh, or you just put enough 
good stuff in there that people come up with phrases like God works in mysterious ways to kind of justify the bad shit. Well, yeah, add in enough ambiguity and you can, you can pretty much justify anything. Well, and I think, yeah, the, the, the idea of like who writes the laws and, and the rules and how do we know, like, how, is there an objective way of analyzing these kinds of things to determine if they're truly just or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Apart from your own personal barometer for such things, mm -hmm. you can't, you, you really can't have something that everybody agrees on. Well, no, that's true because there, that, that's a good point that human beings, every person has their own experiences, their own kind of perspective that where for one person, there's a whole bunch of things that are like, well, yeah, that's perfectly fine. And then there's other people who would see those things as the worst possible thing you could possibly do. Like there is a group of people out there if I say, God damn, they're going to be like, oh, my God, you did the worst thing ever. Right. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. All you have to do is, you know, you stay, it, it's it is subjective. I, although I think I think there's kind of things that, that, that you can. I, you, there's certain things that that. Don't feel right. Um, violating people's autonomy and their bodies and, and and things like that definitely i mean in the beginning most people are going to feel wrong about it but i, I guess uh, well we're that's, also that's what i was talking about like is you can almost justify anything if you try hard enough well you can yeah, yeah. and well in and the more somebody does a thing like being a serial killer pretty soon killing is fun um and and it's okay and you build uh you, you know you construct this whole narrative around things this structure to justify that as as being like oh you know this is this is like an okay thing to do um and yeah and pretty soon the things that you would never have done before are now completely legit and it's made all that much easier if you have like a book, a rule book, uh, like the law or a, some kind of religious text or something telling you, yeah, kill the infidels. Yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden they're not people anymore. It's dehumanizing. And well, you know, my God says that this is what I should do. And so you could just totally ignore all the red flags that would normally go off in your head as you were doing these atrocious things to other people uh, like, well, uh, you know, in Germany in the in thirties and forties and stuff with the, the Jews, like the, you, it, if a German did this thing, let's say, uh, well, let's take the German equation out. But if a person did some of those things to another person, it, it like, internally there's no way you could justify that but when you have all this propaganda telling you oh these people these are the bad ones and they deserve everything like they deserve all this punishment they're not really human you know slavery is a good example of that throughout time it's just like oh th that's the other tribe those are the bad ones we own them they're our property now and they're nothing because they're not us they don't possess the magical features that we do the, like it's very easy to justify pretty much anything at that point yeah and to feel okay about it like oh this is actually a good thing uh, yeah germany's a good example though because like um you know when i was over there for christmas uh i don't remember how it came up but you know the uh topic of you know the the nazis and the concentration camps and all that stuff came up and and <clears throat> both my fiance and her mom uh obviously neither of which were even alive when any of that happened mm. I, I visibly you could see goosebumps and mm. there was like this 
drape of sorrow over the whole room and like we all just felt really sad just talking about it so it's like uh that having that stain like still affecting people that weren't even born at the time makes you wonder like how it ever got justified and like like how how is all that shit somehow justifiable in a nice little package like oh, i'm just following orders mm-hmm that's I, really I, hard that, to follow. That, that's <laughs> actually something that i think about all the time because yeah i mean you can look back through the past and uh, think about people that uh you know are within your realm or something and, and how is that even possible like how how could the concentration camps have happened those the the those death chambers where they gassed people and stuff and and like all the terrible things like that and that was honestly death killing people like that with with like zyklon b or something that's actually like kind of a lesser of of some of the things that happened where there was some terrible shit that happened back then and and that that's not to like pick on any particular group because humans have been doing shit like this for all time yeah. the, 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 this is not an isolated oh this is a little pocket of oh some weird anomalous thing happened and a bunch of people went nuts and did crazy things to people no we do this all the time we're doing it today the, some of the shit that happened over there in germany is happening in ukraine right now like half a century later more than half a century later yeah. still happening like we haven't learned anything and the russians were the ones who were fighting the nazis <laughs> and now they've become the nazis <laughs> like so it it, it kind of raises the question like what is this is this something intrinsic to human nature that that and the, and somehow... they say they're trying to defeat the nazis yes right? well okay and that that's everybody sort of... just says nazi 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 it's like well, that spider-man meme <laughs> that, that, yeah, and that, yeah, exactly. That's actually kind of a, a normal human psychological thing where it, you accuse the other person of, of whatever you're guilty of, essentially. <laughs> um, that, that's how you do that, um, to shift the, the focus to somebody else. And uh, yeah, um, but it's like, how is the where does this come from? How, why do people do this and, and military religion you know anything that paints obedience as a virtue and well drills sure. that into your head can do evil shit they can do good shit sure, too but they sure, usually but, don't <laughs> well, yeah you're right but but how does anybody even stand for the foundations of these things to come into being that like we should all be aware of the danger and and how dark some of these rules and laws are um already like oh wait a minute you know hey this is verging into that territory we've seen time and time again throughout history um let's just stop this before it grows you know if it, it back in the 30s if uh hitler were laughed at um before anything big could happen well then world war ii probably wouldn't have happened at least in the the, the european side um it, like why why how do people allow this to happen and how do people participate like and it, i mean anybody that pens these kinds of rules should be crucified essentially although I guess I can see it because typically, um, you know, if you watch like how things kind of come into being the, the enabling act and stuff like that was the uh, Reichstag fire uh, preceded that. And, and, you know, there's like these big events that people, the, the powers that be will utilize as the uh, catalyst to, to pass things. So it's like, there's a couple of bad actors, something big happens that, had nothing to do with anything it's just like it's a big thing and people are freaking out and they latch onto that and twist it to their own ends and then use a lot of propaganda and psychological manipulative tactics to to get people pumped up so they're like willing to accept anything think about 9 11 9 11 
the Patriot Act, Homeland Security, all that shit. Where did that come from? Well, it was a bunch of people died from that, that particular attack, September 11th. But if you look at it's the, it's like the kinds of powers that were bestowed upon the government after that, these were things that nobody, nobody would ever stand for before 9-11. But people died because of some, some assholes who, you know, had some, whatever, some religious something or other. I don't, I don't know exactly what the justification in their mind was, but they did it anyway, killed thousands of people and everybody was angry. And that emotion, I think, clouded people's judgment to the point where they were, they were just like willing to accept anything. Like it's the whole do something like yeah. nobody. It, it, oh my God. That to me is the most dangerous phrase I've ever heard. Do something like, because it's aimless. It's like, yeah. Oh, I'm just angry and I want something to happen. Oh my God. You know, the gods help me do uh, something. Like, well, it's, it's more dangerous to give it an aim though. And that's, that's what happened is like, Things like Patriot Act only work because they make us believe that we're still under this extreme danger, you know, like yeah, which we we <laughs> never were before and we yeah. aren't now. Like it's yeah. the same level of danger. Yeah. People just shrug their shoulders and say whatever, but you know, like the we've argued the point of like how stupid war is plenty of times and you know like how pointless it is but it begs the question like what do you do you know like who who would be responsible to stop that and how you know like take it out of the the war context you know um yeah, like after world war ii there was the nuremberg trials and mm -hmm. stuff like that you know where it, it, all of a sudden instead of like thousands of people dying bloody deaths we were just talking about it in court and <laughs> you know but you know a bunch of people got together and, and decided what was right and wrong well mostly what was wrong uh <laughs> well yeah yeah in that particular case well, and where were they before, though? Like, that's a question I would wonder. Um, I, I mean, I, I think you certainly. OK, well. All right. So let's say. One person goes out and murders another person. Well, there's really nothing you can do about that unless you're a god. You can't bring that person back. I mean, sure, you can do other stuff. Somebody can try to make amends or pay back something, even though money doesn't equal lives. I don't, I never understood that one. Right. <laughs> um, like you can't buy back a life. Uh, yeah. So maybe analyzing the situation, although, hmm, see, in, in that particular situation, I, like that that case, I, I would say we should wait. Sometimes the best course of action is inaction. That's one of my mm -hmm. rules of life. Um, maybe if you're feeling all hyped and, and angry and frustrated or whatever, maybe the best course of action is to sit and wait and cool off and come back and think about it rationally. And, you know, OK, well, we can't bring this person back from the dead. But why did this person die? Why did this murder happen? Is there a way we could possibly prevent it from happening in the future? But we don't do it the day of. That's exactly how you get some really bad things happening where people aren't rationally thinking. They're, they're feeling, they're emotional, and they're just willing to accept and do anything. Um, so... That to me, I think, is like probably the most rational course of action is to is to wait uh, and, and put it on the list for the future. Like, OK, well, let's 
let's take our time and really think about it. Because if really, if, if a person's life matters, if anybody's lives matter, wouldn't we want to find an actual solution and not some kind of half-ass sort of band-aid kind of feel good sticker that we can stick on things and be like, yep. Yeah. Everything's good as it keeps happening again and again and again. Like I, uh, I often see ways that draw parallels to, you know, gun arguments. Mm -hmm. Uh, Say somebody busts into your house in the middle of the night. Your first instinct, of course, with all of your guns would be, they're going to kill me. I better shoot them first. You initiate force on them. All they've done well, is no, enter no, your no. property. No, which no, is not breaking force. entering your house is is initiating the force. That no, that you, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. That's, that's so a justification. It, no, no, no. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Let's let's change this to a human body thing because your <clears throat> your home is where you live. If I grabbed you and bent you over and just stuffed my cock inside of you. Is that okay? It, like, it, like I'm not. I, I I haven't initiated force, have I? I've just I've simply well, go, there was your ass, and I just kind of put it in there. Like, <laughs> well, you, well, you you shifted the goalpost to the body. Well, that is no, but force. The, that is force on you. But your home is is where well, your body resides. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> what what actual proof do you have that they have any intention? Or any or any means by which to kill you that equal a gun. You just come guns blazing and kill them. Well, no, I I, I wouldn't actually do that. That that wouldn't be my initial yeah, reaction. People, Granted, people shouldn't because I, I would I would pick up a firearm, but I would use it to make that person leave. Yeah, that would they, be my first intent. Yeah, like, that's the point leave, I want to make. Is that place. like the only way? Like the the whole initiation of force thing. You can you can move goalposts all day and night and be like, well, they started. No, 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 they started. And, and it's it, actually it very no, simple. It goes to, nowhere. It's, it's a very very simple thing, actually. To but go ahead. Sorry. No, no, it's totally tautological because there's you can make all kinds of justifications for it, and and uh, you end up with a, a situation where basically it it, it takes a person being the bigger man right like the pacifist the one who finds a way to disarm the situation without uh, uh, or with the least amount of force let's say well but that that doesn't speak to what actually constitutes initiation of force though um so those are entirely different concepts to consider I, I agree. Like you should always opt for the less violent solution. Uh, I mean, but somebody kicking in your door in the middle of the night and coming into your house is not a non forceful thing. It is not uh, a peaceful thing. Right. Um, but the, you can't assume that they're, Hey, I just, Hey, can I have a cup of tea with you? That, that's, <laughs> That is well, historically well statistically while we're moving, not what happens when while we're moving goalposts. Board. Why don't we follow the bread? Who's crumbs? moving goalposts? <laughs> why don't we Where? follow the breadcrumbs and say the guy who busted in? Well, earlier that day, you went and knocked over all of his trash cans with your your panel van and and drove away and dragged garbage all across the street and pissed him off royally. Well, that's kind of like a you see. Speaking That's of moving goalposts, now, like, his now it's a story problem. Like I'm just <laughs> saying, like as an isolated thing, if you are alone in your house watching Netflix and somebody kicks down your door and comes in, I mean, I don't know in what context you could possibly assume that that person has good intentions, that they want to just like give you a hug or something. Like, no, it, it's not about good intentions. It's about protecting your life. There is absolutely no like uh, uh, burden of proof is, is not really met to say that you will definitely lose your life if you don't take theirs first. It, it, it's not about losing your life, and it's not about taking theirs. No, 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 no. It is. It's about, it's about harm. 
Like it could be property too. Like it, no, some of your property could this, be your this life. This is the this is the thing. Like like people like bitching about riots and stuff. Like property is not like harm. I mean, well, it, okay, so it harms so, the property, but that's inanimate. Okay, so if I just like came in with a a rifle and held it, I mean, it's you shitty. And took all your shit, it's took shitty. everything, leaving you with literally nothing. That would be okay. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying it's shitty, but it's not taking your life. It's not hurting you. It is hurting you. It absolutely is. No. Somebody. Oh, yes. Do you you feel physical pain when somebody walks out with your TV? That is not what hurting is all about. Yeah, it is. Hurting you. Okay. Let's say. Money is made up. So. This is true. But. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let's. Before we get too far afield. Um. (laughs) Imagine you are a contractor, your livelihood, the way you feed your kids and pay for all the bills and heat your house and, and, and everything is you using all the tools. You, you drive your truck and you build things and fix things. And that's, that's how you feed your family. Somebody comes and breaks into your truck, steals all your tools. Twenty thousand, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of tools. Like you don't have the money to buy more tools. Does that not hurt you? If if you suddenly lost your means of providing for your family, heating the house, what? feeding well, your family, it's gone now. That, that that you're not harmed at all. If you're dumb enough to not have insurance, yeah, I suppose. But if you okay. do have insurance, no, no. Okay. you have absolutely no reason to go kill somebody because they're taking I, your tool. I'm not talking about killing. You, now, I'm moving the goalposts. I'm not well, talking about killing. I'm talking you're about using harm. guns. <laughs> I'm, no, no. I'm talking about per, does it constitute personal harm if that happens? Yes, no. you can have insurance. But have you ever dealt with insurance from theft? Oh yeah, it takes but months. It's still months, not maybe harm. years. Absolutely, you will be not. unable to pay the bills for a very long time. What do you do in the meantime? That is absolutely harm if somebody takes those things. And maybe it's an heirloom. Maybe it's a, your your grandmother's ashes that somebody steals or throws on the ground or something. That is that not harm? Is There's that things, harm? Rima? Yeah, <laughs> but well, in that that's a it's very just dismiss- stuff. It's kind of just dismissing things like, because again, it, it, things are subjective. It, it's like, I can't, I know what's important to me, but what's important to me is not the same as what's important to somebody else. I can't say, well, that's not important to me. So it's not important to you. That's a, a classic fall- fallacious argument right there. Like, okay. You, I mean, you know? I just, I just have a problem with drawing these connecting lines between inanimate objects and you your physical person well the, I, no, that those lines, as even as a biologist no, that doesn't no, jive no, with me. okay those lines have never been drawn like when it comes to initiating force force is not it, the the requirement for force to be in existence does not require you to be like physically injured for force to happen. Force could be a, anything against okay, so your In the context of this, are we talking about taking someone's life as a response to a, a, perce- a perceived force? No, no, no. I, I, that, that, okay, because I was. was. I, I had said that. Like way war back. and guns and stuff like no, that. I had That's said what that I'm... way back. That, like, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that is the right response to every single situation like oh pick up a gun because if somebody's stealing your tools you choke them out and then call the cops you know like no now now but that's (laughs) a response in kind that's force too like you're yeah but response in kind you could kill somebody choking them Uh, like you never know far Um, less likely than shooting them though well no you wouldn't in in fact you always go center mass so you statistically most encounters with firearms don't end in somebody being shot just so you know Millions of encounters every year. Most of them, people just walk of, away. Of the ones that people get shot, though, there's a pretty good chunk that do die. <laughs> well, and that's that, that's the point. Like well, it, it, it doesn't really make does sense correlate? to be like, "This is me waving a gun at you and scaring you off." How, how and does then... that correlate? I, I mean, my point is like, you can use a gun without shooting a person, and and statistically, that is how most encounters happen. Um, you, 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 
people walk away and nobody is injured and uh, and they're actually very rarely reported so it's kind of actually difficult to get this information um but i people- see yeah i mean i kind of see the argument for that but i also see it like lumping in drunk driving accidents as a statistic to say that alcohol killed someone like well you know biologically I, I, speaking i, I agree really? i understand and and i think this is a this is a topic that deserves like very nuanced and deep discussion and analysis. Yeah. But originally we were talking about what constitutes force. And, and now we're in the topic of pointing guns at people and stuff. It's like, okay, well, th- those are, like I said, I, I feel like those are in two entirely separate containers. Um, like you can analyze what constitutes initiation of force independent of what you do in response to that initiation of force. Like those two things are valid things to discuss. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, wait, what do you, what do you mean there? Cause I mean, like the, the parallel I went initially was war people killing mm-hmm. people <laughs> over shit that nobody did to them directly Yeah. to uh, somebody breaking in and taking your stuff and you just like responding with your gun to somebody who didn't do anything directly to you. They're just well, taking your shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually that's a good, made me think about something too. It's like, okay, well I might pick up a gun. You having ninja skills might bury your hands, which your hands could be deadlier than that. Like or phase through the wall and come up they, behind him. Yeah. Maybe you're some <laughs> kind of fucking witch or something like that. <laughs> The thing is, like, it's not the tool or the methodology; it's the response, and it's the circumstances that Absolutely. initiate that response that that lead to that response. Um, this is the kind of justification we make after nine eleven. They came into our country, yeah. so I want them dead. You know? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> I, I do have to say, like, I, I love this conversation. I'm sure that mm-hmm. th- th- this has gone all over the place. <laughs> um, we're probably going to spawn multiple episodes about this because like <laughs> man we went all over and there's probably more movement to be had um but yeah like that's a good point that people uh, a, a few bad actors from another place in the world um of course <clears throat> saudi arabia is usually ignored um even though that's where like all this came from but oh let's go to uh, you know uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, whatever. Um, but that war actually. So it feels in, in, in my mind. I, I could see a much shorter line between uh, somebody breaking into your house and you physically responding a- against that particular person than I can with warfare, like. Like you'd said, you don't know the person. They didn't do anything to you. It's just some mm-hmm. country, another bunch of people way over there somewhere on planet Earth. And now you're picking up arms and putting on armor and flying jets and dropping bombs. You're like, but they didn't personally do anything to you. I mm-hmm. That I cannot justify. Yeah. Absolutely. There's, there, there is no way to justify that. There, there's no logical pathway that you could pass through to end at that where you go and take up arms against somebody you've never met that didn't personally do a thing to you and kill them like that that doesn't make any sense it it makes way more sense even though maybe it's not always the best idea it makes makes way way more sense if it's like your own house your own family like local to you it's a person standing in front of you that just kicked your door down and is grabbing your TV. Like, okay, well, I, I could see that. Like, that that actually kind of makes sense. They are physically in front of you. It's an actual person, and you witnessed what they did. Whereas, oh, you, there's these people over here. Well, I'm just going to remote drone bomb them. Right. You know? I just like, had an interesting thought. What do you think a military would look like if it didn't have that obedience drilled into it. Like if you could be a Ken Watanabe and be like, no, I don't, I don't think this is a just fight. I'm backing out of this one. What, 
what do you think that would look like on a global mm-hmm. scale if if we all settled differences based on whether or not we actually felt transgressed upon like right down to each that, individual soldier that, that's know? actually a very good thing to to ponder like yeah. I, I like I obedience think, is the problem well yeah absolutely <laughs> i think warfare would be virtually eliminated um i mean i guess in the case of ukraine it's pretty simple okay here's my town that i'm living in a bunch of russians just stormed in here and started raping people and taking our stuff and killing people they didn't like and now they're sitting there they, they're like occupying our houses and stuff like okay that that i could feel like that that makes sense to to fight back against that to yeah. push that back um and that is a personal thing you can look you're you're there are actual russians in your former house or in your school that you went to or something just chilling there smoking cigarettes and like stacking up arms and stuff like oh okay there's tanks driving through your neighborhood that that's much more real that that's close yeah. to home um but when it goes beyond that yeah uh i oh, think I just realized military the third, is- the third amendment is a sanctified justification of force <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that well, let that, this soldier take your bed. That's that's a <laughs> you have to. You're compelled. Oh no, actually, it's the <laughs> reverse of that. It would, because that happened. It, it's to counter that. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> that used to happen a long time ago. Yeah, soldiers would just come into your house and be like, "Yep, we're sequestering this for for the king." It's that obscure of an amendment. I completely like flipped it in my head. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and I can't fault you for that because, like, wh- when does that ever happen? <laughs> um, but you know, it becomes much harder to to justify military action as things become more obscure and more distant. And I think the world would be a more peaceful place if everybody everybody involved had the option of just opting out and just eh, nope peace out i'll see you later like this doesn't make any sense anymore (laughs) like it would have to be a really big deal and you know of course the media and the government medias and governments across the world they they propagandize everything and sell us on all these military actions as if they're like the most important thing oh my god the 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 others they're doing the thing and we've got to do the thing against them we gotta do something yeah yeah exactly (laughs) but but i mean if it really is important, you should personally have experienced it. You should have felt it. Like it should be personally impacting you. And if it's not, well then why do it? Why fight that war? Why what? Just as some kind of like billionaire politician said so? Like, why? That doesn't make any sense. Just so yeah, maybe, maybe. That's the way we should conduct things. And I guess like go back to like the militia kind of thing, like just volunteer militaries that kind of train and war game together and stuff. And they're just kind of there in case. And if something happens, well, we've already trained for that. Um, and and there's no standing army, no like real official military. It's just the people. And I guess in a way that eliminates the whole hierarchical uh, command structure where where there's a bunch of authoritative figures telling you to do things and you feel compelled to do it. Uh, Well, I mean, in the case of Russia, uh, it's guns that make that that compel you to do things. Uh, Because, you know, if you're on the front lines and you turn back and run away, well, the people behind you are going to shoot you. And if you're the person shooting the people that are running away and you turn back, the people behind you will shoot you. <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> and you can see how well that's playing out over there. Oh my God, what a fantastic operation that is. It's so successful. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. What is, what is up with this uh, doomsday clock anyway? Like, I feel like that's a, 
a huge dog whistle sort of thing like oh no we need to do something you know like everybody get your hackles up or your heckles or your schmeckles <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, originally, I think the Doomsday Clock was built around the uh, Cold War and nuclear arms and things like that. Um, Huge propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, and it is a little, it does feel a little propagandistic that that it's kind of like, it's oversimplifying a very complex situation to the point where it's like, how many minutes from midnight are you? Midnight, right. of course, being Armageddon. We all know that. And and how many seconds or minutes to midnight are you? And it goes back and forth and they explain things. And it, it just feels very childlike. Uh, yeah. the, but people take it seriously. Like, oh, my God, we're oh, yeah. two minutes to midnight, two seconds to midnight. Oh, right. fuck. Like, how much urgency are you trying to create by, like, taking this all down to like seconds we've mm-hmm. only got seconds to do something you know like mm-hmm. <laughs> when in reality like nobody will ever drop a nuclear bomb ever again i'm i'm so sure of that like well I, in fact the russo ukraine war has demonstrated that um mm-hmm. like would have happened has, by <laughs> yeah russia has plenty that's of what nukes. that's what you start off with <laughs> yeah, if, you, yeah. if you've got nukes and you intend on using them you just drop them you're mm-hmm. like i want that i'll wait 30 years for it to yeah, you know yeah. like not be radioactive and then i'll take it yeah exactly <laughs> well it depends airburst or ground you burst. have a flag yeah <laughs> airburst or ground burst though that does depend on how long it's going to be if it's an airburst you could go in there like an hour after a detonation I prefer Starburst. The Starburst. Uh, <laughs> the sun. <laughs> I, well, so in, in the intervening years, though, the doomsday clock has kind of changed to encapsulate more things, uh, climate <laughs> change and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, well, now it's almost like too many things to consider. And, and it, honestly, to me, it's just like one of those things that is just a, a seed of fear like you look at that and and of course the the time has never never in my lifetime is the doomsday clock gone to like you know half an hour from midnight it's <laughs> always been kind of hovering and i'm like well wait a minute I mean, you know, it, in my experience clocks tick right <laughs> like the, there's a point where it hits that upward angle right the so batteries I, are getting really low on it. Yeah, so it's like, well, it, it, <laughs> yeah, just wavering back and forth. <laughs> it, 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 at, a, at a certain point, it does kind of feel like the boy who cried wolf. Like, like mm-hmm. okay, you've been telling us the end is near for so long. Oh, 40 years episode, now, I think. Have we done an end of the world episode? Like, oh, we should. Oh, um, we totally should. Like, uh, that, that whole idea is just so dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, what... It, I, I I even wonder what people are picturing when somebody says the end of the world is is on its way. You know, like we're ninety seconds from midnight. Whatever. You know, like it, yeah. Well, they're probably picturing like uh, you know the movie twenty twelve or something and huge shit. Or what was that movie about the moon hitting the Earth or something? Um, Krypton it, exploding or something. Yeah, like. it was like yeah. Uh, there's just like a bunch of completely ridiculous movie kind of things and and i think maybe that's what people think about but here's the thing a lot of this feels very similar to back in there was this trend back in the 80s of religious people walking around the streets of big cities holding signs like over their bodies draped over their bodies that said like the end is nigh you know the end is coming repent and stuff and okay well there how many doomsday cults have there been uh what are those people that that the oh god the um oh they have a website that's still in operation now what what are they called uh the uh west oh bro god. or no no oh uh, god what? the hail bop dudes or i think so yeah they were tied to a comet and they were supposed to like kill themselves to right leave yeah. their bodies what what was the name of that cult 
Ah, I just oh, had it. Oh. oh, well. Yeah, it doesn't matter <laughs> because it really doesn't matter. We shouldn't we shouldn't say their names anyway. Cause yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> cults like this have existed for millennia. Um, groups, people, and groups coming and emerging and telling everybody that oh, this big thing is going to happen if you don't do this thing, and you better follow our doctrine, which kind of connects with what we were talking about earlier about the whole war thing and authority figures and, and and why people do stupid shit and do heinous things to each other um because well they're they're deluded that they're led heaven's astray gate. heaven's gate yeah yep. the heaven's gate cult yep yep yeah i'm like we shouldn't say their name and then i look it up and i'm like heaven's gate <laughs> <laughs> uh, i yeah I, they they actually left behind a few people and left them enough money to pay them for an eternity for the rest of their lives to keep that website going. Yeah. Like that, that was the thing. And you know, we can laugh about it now, but it's like eh, people actually died because of their beliefs. Yeah. They believed for real that that was, that was happening. That, th that well, this was the end and we've got to, eliminate our physical bodies and ascend up into the cosmos and join with this comet and whatever oh my and God. yeah yeah like, what, why do people believe that's necessary if they believe there's something with all this power like couldn't they just take you like as you are just snatch you up or or, good, yeah. or kill you for you like why do you have to kill you like what's yeah, that? exactly. Well, that, what that's is... actually a really good point. <laughs> like, if, if your God is so omnipotent, well, you shouldn't have to do anything. This is why we need to teach logic in in grade school because yeah. if people just thought about it for a second, mm -hmm. they wouldn't kill themselves or drink Kool Aid. You know, like <laughs> well, in least <sighs> Kool Aid. In the case of a lot of cults, um, the 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 S word cult. Um, which I won't say because it's probably going <laughs> to, we'll get descended upon by other people, but in and a lot ideology. of ideology, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, in a lot of cults, they, they don't bring on logical, rational people. Um, they find people who are broken, who are wanting something. They, they need something. Their, their lives are hollow and the cult the whatever philosophy they have becomes that that object that fills that emptiness within them um and obviously they use tricks and tactics and hooks to to get people in um and then from there you can mani manipulate anybody to do anything uh it happens time and time again and it's happening now and it will happen in the future like People are just susceptible to that stuff. Like they, they find these people who are at their lowest and give them hope and say, Hey, Oh, Hey, look at you. You, you seem down on your luck, you know? And then <laughs> like, Hey, how about this pamphlet? And then pretty soon while well, you're, uh, you know, <laughs> mass murdering people and drinking Kool-Aid and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's very similar. Like, I don't, there are parallels with governments, religions, cults, the military, like it all kind of parallels, like what allows people, what, what forces induce people to do the things that they would normally not do. Um, and yeah. I, I I think that's kind of an open-ended question at this point. Yeah. Rhetorical, I guess. Like that's a comment section sort of thing. Yeah. But Definitely it's some it's propaganda. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's important. And, and, you know, like we really should be talking about this and people that want control of other people don't want people talking about this. They don't want people to be thinking critically mm -hmm. and, and having a discussion. No, no. They want us to be angry. 
They want us to be emotional, like ah, get all pumped up about something, <laughs> you know, because what they can do, I mean, it's like a keto, essentially, like politics, the military cults. It's like a keto. You, you, you just take somebody's energy and redirect it in the way that you want it to be. Like you have control over that and you use that force against another person. That's what happens. I, I just had this random thought. Um, you know, YouTube is kind of an authority. You know, they tell us when we can or cannot make money. Mm-hmm. And uh, in in the situations where you can test it, well, they have to pay someone to sit and watch your, your video, right? Mm-hmm. So every now and then, before a premiere, I'll see on the anal- analytics, I'll see a view or two but then sometimes one of our episodes will get like five views before it even airs <laughs> and, and i i think it would be so funny if like we built this cult following within youtube like the company of all these people being like hey, you gotta watch this show man yeah. like like they're always saying shit that gets them demonetized but it's so good <laughs> <laughs> And we just like <laughs> blow up and go viral within YouTube. <laughs> Take it down yeah. from YouTube the as a YouTube as a company, not like <laughs> a website. Yeah, we just like become gods to them. <laughs> like, yeah, it's possible. I, like, it's a dangerous path to tread, though. Like, because that kind of control is very heady. Um, it's certainly feels good to to be in charge and and <laughs> lead people essentially but you know personally i'd rather lead people in a good way yeah um, but it's it, like i i feel that so in a lot of cases with religions cults governments whatever initially the people doing things working within those constructs like they have good intentions but the system corrupts them. Uh, it's very corrupting having that kind of control over people um, and th- that kind of sway, like where you, you basically everybody's hanging on your every word and you just say a thing and people do a thing. It's, I can't imagine even the most uh, stalwart human being would probably cave to that um and and so i think that's kind of what happens too is like okay well you have good intentions and you originally think well i'm gonna do good and make a difference change the world and then things start shifting and like all of a sudden it becomes more about I guess you lose sight of the original uh, doctrine and and it becomes more of an internal doctrine. um, I think I, you know, it's like, this is a kind of a thing that I think about all the time and try to understand, comprehend these kinds of things. Like, how does that happen? How, how did the Nazis, how how was that a thing? It Mm. it shouldn't be possible. Like looking back now, a hundred percent of the planet, well, okay, 99.99999% of the planet thinks that was dumb. But, okay, well, what changed? Why do we look back and think that's dumb? Why didn't we think it's dumb when it was happening? How do we get from it not existing to it, like, kind of taking over? Hmm. You know, I just had another interesting thought going back a little bit to the tautology of like initiation of force and and uh a couple of days ago there was a mass shooting in california and uh the shooter took his own life and that's kind of the end of it right like like even even when everybody remains alive in a situation then you go through these court proceedings and deciding who gets to pick right and wrong and this and that. But when somebody like uh, initiates force on a bunch of people and takes their lives and then takes their own life, who pays for that? 
Yeah, who, it, it's kinda... over. It's it's over. So like, eh, I don't know. Is that really like truly the only way to like break cycles? Is to just like, if you're a dick, you should kill yourself. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean that, yeah, that that's a whole nother can of worms. I I feel like. <laughs> Maybe but, I shouldn't and, say something like that while I'm getting drunk. Uh, well, it's okay because I'm <laughs> I'm getting drunk too. So, uh, <laughs> but I think we're we're kind of making a lot of sense here. <laughs> you know, I, I've I've noticed a pattern with a lot of these uh, shootings where where people just go and indiscriminately kill people that they end up killing themselves, mm-hmm. um, which to me indicates that their actions aren't uh it's not like retribution it's not a a reaction to something like a specific person or or whatever it's something internal that they're externalizing in that way um i uh, i would argue that most of these kinds of cases are mental health oriented and yeah you know, we really, really need to deal with that. Like, that's yeah, it's, it's either thing. an explosion of like negative energy, or it's becoming overwhelmed with guilt at mm-hmm. what they've done. Yeah, but, yeah. Either way, there's definitely well, some- but but somebody, people with no screws loose, don't just decide one day to go out and kill a bunch of people. That there, there's there's other things at at play and there's things that have happened prior to that. There's steps leading up to that, that could have been addressed, but they weren't. Why weren't they? Why do Mm -hmm. people ignore all of these things? Why do people who are suffering internally and dealing with stuff, struggling with their own mental health issues, feel like they can't talk about them and can't go to somebody that to me is the core issue here that like normal people who are happy in their lives don't just take up arms and execute people that that that's not a thing there's something else going on and it's a thing that could be helped not everything i i i, I will admit that like there's there's no way to fix everybody but certainly a lot of people they're simple I, things. It, all it takes is a conversation sometimes. Like that's all it, it is. I, I think that's part of the problem though, is force initiation of force. It's like, you can't force someone to get help for themselves. Um, you know, like in, in Germany, there's like basically no homeless. There's no involuntary homelessness. There are a few homeless people and each and every one of them you can tell is severely unfortunately severely mentally ill Mm -hmm. and they they absolutely have access to get the help the only explanation for them not getting the help is they just don't want to well true you can't really make them no no and i'm not advocating for 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 forcing people to undergo some psychotherapy or something but But i'm just saying like they still could be dangerous and you know well they could be but there's another aspect and it, it, it's uh, the, the, the public perception, the way people might be ashamed that they're dealing with something and, and don't want help because they feel ashamed. They, 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 their own personal issues that they're struggling with might prevent them. Like, and, and I think that alone, that one thing dealing with that, public perception of mental health would be a game changer. That's the thing that would make everything mm-hmm. vastly improved. Um, and access to it. Is well, we, and there, there is access. That's the thing. There, there's plenty of it uh, in most places in the world. There's, there's obviously there's some places that are better than others. Um, but, you know, simply having, um, a door to walk through doesn't mean that that door what's on the other side of that door yields uh salvation or a solution. Mm-hmm. Um, you do have to have competent people 
uh, who are able to actually handle those things. But people being willing to pick themselves up and walk through that door it is really critical. Uh, and and I feel looking at all these cases, all these situations that have happened, it's like, yeah, these are people in need of help. They needed help a long, long time ago, and they didn't get it, and they didn't ask for it. Why? Why is that? Because it's not the fact that people had access to firearms. Like, okay, I have access to firearms. I There's like 20 of them behind me. Like that... <laughs> I'm not shooting people. I don't do that. Like, so what separates me from the person who did do that? Like, that's a critical question to ask. Why, why am I not doing that? Uh, And, you know, I have things that bug me, the issues and stuff like that. And I'm totally willing to admit that. Um, But nothing that's, that, that would, push me over that precipice to to want to like inflict injury or death on other people that that's like completely outside my wheelhouse so what what separates us why are these people willing to do that and and like and then kill themselves too which the fact that they kill themselves should be kind of a marker that that should be an indication of okay there's something very wrong here um yeah sorry i kind of went off on a tangent yeah. there well i mean it's it, it, hmm. it's interesting that, it, that this went to suicide but it makes a lot of sense really um you well, know the, it, yeah. because really who better to judge your actions than your own self Ooh red dwarf kind of thing yeah i mean i I'm, actually like i love that episode it makes sense right mm-hmm. like i i don't think i mean suicide sucks more often than not it's it's tragic uh seemingly to the outsiders unnecessary but to anyone that's like struggled with it um you you definitely feel like it's necessary like it, there's a uh a very real uh this is probably one of those moments we should put the hotline number down there oh yeah. i was gonna say yeah yeah we should do that although yeah, there's it, hotlines across the world too right so. yeah i remember one time you did like a whole like scrolling <laughs> yep thing. yep <laughs> uh if we remember up there uh we'll put a link to that um, yeah but it's you can uh scroll to the end of that video and and get get some help uh, like even having a conversation with another person a sympathetic person yeah. anyway and, and, sorry and really like we we need to stop we really this is the most important thing we have to stop treating it like it's the worst thing in the world for someone to talk about wanting to kill themselves mm-hmm. because all you're doing is sweeping it under the rug. Yeah. They're not going to want to talk about it. If they know you're just going to be like, Oh my God, like you need help and blah, 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 blah. Maybe they just need to talk in the moment. Mm-hmm. A- anyone is, I think, I think probably every human being thinks about it, but most of us lie about not thinking about it i i was actually just thinking that 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 i think every single person has contemplated suicide at some point um which which i guess is saddening but also motivating in a way that like okay you're not alone like every other person on the planet everywhere every person not just in your hometown or your country no every human being on the face of the planet yeah. has gone through something where they're like you know what i just like to end it all so, yeah so um, what's the stigma for like yeah there shouldn't gonna be? be like oh my god you shouldn't think that way when you've pretty much probably thought that way yourself at one point you know like exactly 
Well, yeah, and and a lot of these these shootings too, I think, are connected with those kind of mental uh, states that that somebody's in a state and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna go out, but I'm gonna go out and do something at the same time. And, and I, I mean, what other explanation is it, or would there be for for people? killing a bunch of people and then killing themselves or death by a cop or something like that. Oh man, we're so demonetized right now, <laughs> um, but it's worth it. Like it, it's a worthy cause, honestly, like this is a thing that I feel very strongly about like mental health, um, helping people in, in those kinds of situations. I think it's very important and being accepting uh, like, yeah, like you said, the overreaction like oh my god you, you you know you're thinking this why why is that the reaction that people have it should be we should lean towards comfort um and empathy and mm-hmm. and listening and that kind of thing um at the very least and it shouldn't be a thing where oh you you are living within this particular mindset and now oh, we've got to commit you to some kind of mental facility where they're going to inject you with a bunch of drugs and strap you down and slap you in the face and molest you or whatever they're going to do. I I, I don't know what Not happens. Not quite like that. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I've, yeah. I've been in that situation. It, it depends on where you are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I'll say it's, it's shitty. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I've uh, voluntarily checked in twice for suicidality and I checked myself out because I became well enough after calming down to realize that I didn't actually want to die, but I wanted to die even more just being in there because it was that shitty. Like, so I was like, I got to get out of here. Like, and that's yeah. why everyone wants to get out of there. <laughs> well, and, and that that actually, that's a very, very good point. Like, shouldn't the places that are supposed to heal people be a place you want to be? It, why are the places of healing so uncomfortable that you would rather die than be there? Like, yeah. it. We're obviously doing something wrong. I did have some good memories, actually, from my first stay. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like, they would have activities like karaoke or you'd, you know, have some meaningful conversations with people or something. But uh, the second time was just shit. Uh, Yeah, that... uh... Well actually both times they accidentally put me in the wrong place like i was in the drunk tank the first time <laughs> and i was like i'm not an alcoholic so so they yeah. moved me. and then the second time they put me in like the violent ward so <laughs> there were like like arch enemies of batman in there like <laughs> It's hardcore. <laughs> it's like nothing. You you they throw you in a room and it's like a whole bunch of banes like <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that was, that was pretty nuts. <laughs> oh man. Well, and that that'll that right there kind of illustrates that that nobody really has a clue what to do. Nobody has a clue what's going on. Um or how to help people. And of all we spend billions and billions of dollars doing stuff and, you know, spinning our wheels. And yet the problem persists and it's actually getting a little bit worse now. Like, okay, well, obviously it's not money. We have to take a different approach. And the approach has to be personal. We have to think about people right? People aren't machines. Oh, well, okay. We are machines, but we're a special kind of machine. Um, (laughs) So um, we have to address everybody individually. And address machine. (laughs) (laughs) James Brown. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Hmm. 
<laughs> I think I've had too much beer, but I, th <laughs> this topic though is really personal to me. Like, yeah, I, I, I feel like it seems so difficult, but it's actually very simple. Um, we just have to discover the simple solution. And I think conversations and treating people like humans like is <laughs> is one of the first steps and and, and society at, at large too new, needs to do that like we shouldn't be treating people with, struggling with mental health issues uh, as some kind of pariah like that that yeah that's the way like okay if you want mass shooters that's exactly how you get mass shooters um like that is the formula that you would employ to get that like okay well maybe let's take a different approach i mean i i know i just said everybody probably thinks about it but i kind of wonder now like because if it if it it has like a real physiological impact mm -hmm. you know like there's there's a whole lot going on there that is trying to convince you that you just need to end it you know like mm -hmm. you you won't even i mean just speaking from my personal experiences when i enter a deep depression it takes like conscious effort to breathe like my body literally tries to just forget how to breathe. Shutting down your autonomic functions. Yeah. <laughs> like my brain stem just goes to sleep. It's like, <laughs> eh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a weird feeling. It's like there's an elephant on your chest, you know, like mm -hmm. and and you can take take all these deep breaths. Like you're gasping for air, trying to like stay alive in the moment and it, and it won't even do anything and you still like feel like shit you know like it's strong yeah oh yeah absolutely whoo man that and i take medication Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well somebody that the only medication i take is uh well on the books is beer oh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. which is a valid medication in some situations yeah like as long as you don't go overboard yeah uh, but uh, actually i briefly i'd like to talk about medication um because i feel like especially in psychiatry to some extent in psychology in the psychological medical field uh there's this concept well and also i think it applies to other medical fields too this idea that you know you need to take a medication to solve a problem as if your problem is you have a deficiency of this particular medication that didn't exist in the wild but now you have to take it in perpetuity like well medical science has definitely improved a lot and, and there are certainly things that can that can help but when you work in a field as a physician or a doctor and you have a patient in front of you well it's kind of uh things have become kind of a uh conveyor belt sort of assembly line kind of process where okay well here's this other person i'll just give them this pill and off they go like okay that is the worst way you could possibly handle mental health issues with people <laughs> yeah like it, it okay sure medicine okay we we we've come a long way and and made strides and and created amazing products and figured out how the brain works and brain chemistry and stuff. Um, but we we're, we're still kind of infants in that regard. Um, so it, it really disappoints me that 
medical science, especially when it comes to psych psychology, um, seems to be focused on drugs. Like, okay, you prescribe a thing, you send them off, off they go, and that's the end of the story. Well, no, that's the beginning of the story. It, it's kind of like, imagine if somebody came into your place, you're a, a, a doctor's office or something like that, and somebody comes in with a broken leg. Well, you don't just simply push the bones back together and then wrap it up with some uh, tape and, uh, you know, some... The, the oh god i can't actually remember. i guess that's what they're doing now <laughs> well pretty much but but you don't just like put a oh, plaster that that's the word i'm thinking of tape and plaster you don't just like tape and plaster their leg and like oh, pff, I, you're on your own now like yeah. no no that's the beginning like okay you fixed the initial thing but now you have a very tall hill to climb and that is therapy that that is the recovery process that's overcoming things that that like that person who broke their leg is going to have to go through physical therapy and and figure out how to move and and heal themselves and and stuff like ah. that is a lot of work though and you know there's there's a prohibitive aspect to that. And, and, well, this speaks to access. Access isn't just like being able to afford something. It's having the time to do it. Yeah. Which, I mean, goes hand in hand in, in a way. Like, we have to work a bunch to survive. So we don't have that much time to invest in ourselves. True. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'll say you can't fix everything with just therapy like there are actual biological deficiencies that no, I, require medication i i agree i agree and and i'm i marvel at our progress in that regard like that that is a very good thing um but the engineer in me th th likes to think further back like okay well okay yes there is a broken human in front of me there there's there's a person who's gone through some shit can we build things up in a way that where like those kinds of circumstances never happen to people to begin with like it it would be trivial to stop something a long time ago when you're in middle school or elementary school, just change a few variables and your whole life would be different. You wouldn't be grown the way you're grown and wouldn't end up the way you end up. Um, I mean, it's a lot easier. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Isn't that the, the saying? Um so shouldn't we be focused on that? Like the early days? <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, just a thought. It's interesting that Star Trek doesn't have any mentally ill people. Hmm. Barkley? Oh, yeah. That's true. I think he'd be the one. I, I, uh, he's my That's favorite character. <laughs> he's my favorite character, though. Like, I love Barkley. <laughs> like oh god love that yeah guy. but i mean I, okay yeah like it's rare though you know and i wonder mm -hmm. if that was intentional like maybe there is something to be said for like finding the right balance in life and yeah yeah i mean like there's a lot of stuff that plays in a lot of factors um mm -hmm. like my my testosterone has been extra low lately and that really screws with my mood mm -hmm. you know and that really doesn't have anything to do with like day-to-day -day brain chemistry it's conditional mm -hmm. you know and and you know i'll have like a bunch of shit going on in life that's conditional too and it has just as much effect 
any anybody is susceptible to suicidality, to deep depression, to by bipolar oh, yeah. disease. Like absolutely. And and that's why I think it's important to engage with people and have conversations. And we should ever be espousing the ideas of acceptance that yeah. like if somebody is going through something we our default position should be accepting them yeah. and and understanding it's, it's not a permanent condition in most cases yeah yeah exactly and, and it's not like it's not a bad thing it's a thing that every single human being goes through every human everywhere on planet earth goes through everybody's gone through something i mean you know okay yeah circumstances are different you know you're you're, you're, but it it doesn't matter because it's all subjective like to you like a thing that to me would be insignificant might be the most significant thing that's ever happened in your life and vice versa um so how can I sit here and judge you about what you're going through? I can't. So yeah, we should begin oh, full circle. Yes. Who judges who? Uh, exactly. Huh. Interesting. Oh my what god. Is- we've we've gone through so many war is just mental health issues like (laughs) it it kind of (laughs) is wow huh well you know tying religion cults politics together um those are also mental health issues too i just i i wonder when people are going to discover this show like (laughs) (laughs) they will they will such a cool like i don't know like a- every episode is like trying out a new roller coaster yeah, it <laughs> is and yeah, we're like how yeah we we dive so far into things that nobody else is talking about you no know, th- this episode nobody else there are like <laughs> billions of videos on youtube and i can guarantee you there is no one else who has talked about things the way we've talked about them this particular subject um yeah billions of videos <laughs> like again yeah, most of it's like makeup videos and those fakey how-to videos and, and things like that yeah our, our shit's too cerebral for most people mm-hmm <laughs> They're like, oh, where's all the flashy camera angles? And... <laughs> yeah. But I, I feel like this is something that will help people. Um, somebody somewhere is going to be struggling with their own mental health issues, and they're going to come across this and hopefully find some help. Um, yeah. Like, and, and, and... The, the the temporary nature of a lot of it is is something important for people to keep in their minds because it's very easy to get frustrated with a friend or a family member that's going through some shit. But abandoning them is only going to make it worse. Yeah. Well, that, that's now, exactly... Now, you gotta take care of yourself, of course. Yeah, but like you know, find the balance Mm -hmm. and, you know, like don't, don't make things worse. Well, and and abandoning somebody who's in need of help is exactly how you get mass shooters and, and Mm -hmm. Hitler's and stuff like that. I mean, imagine if somebody merely bought, one of Hitler's paintings back in the thirties, how different (laughs) would the world be if that happened? And imagine if that person who bought the painting was a Jew. (laughs) (laughs) It would totally 
turn everything on its head. Huh. We, oh my God, we. What a great episode. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> From like war crimes to suicide. And then somewhere in the middle, we were like going off on Second Amendment. <laughs> yes, Second <laughs> Amendment, initiation of force, mental health and stuff. Like, I feel like some of these things, they're all kind of interconnected um, in their own way. Um, so, like, we didn't even spend that much time on the question of who gets to decide what, the right and wrong. I I actually had a note <laughs> very early on to bring <laughs> that up, and yeah, we didn't. <laughs> And I guess Maybe we like I, briefly skirted it, but like, well, oh, I, I did mention that, like, I, I, I think that's how we got on suicide, actually, is like, mm-hmm. who better to judge yourself mm-hmm. than you, than right? your own self? Yeah. Yeah. So it, if, if we could, what if justice in, was like that? Like, I, I think it should be that that was, uh, I mean, everybody looking, just tells you what you did to piss them off. Well, and looking at the U.S. Constitution, like a jury of your peers, that's a pretty powerful condition to set. Yeah. Like, okay, you know, you you should have, you should be judged by people who live within your station, you uh, your own real... socioeconomic status, or something like that. So you get real re- rehabilitation and mm-hmm. retribution. If you, if you had a bunch of people just like dogging on somebody like this is what you did to me blah 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 making them feel like shit like either they're going to be like you know what I deserve to die you know do it for you or yeah. they're going to be like I I I'm sorry I didn't realize I want to make it better let me make it better well and and that the delineation between when you off yourself and when you ask for penance Mm -hmm. forgiveness um depends on how early that particular thing is addressed i i think Uh, yeah like if you can like reach somebody early on well then they're never going to get to that like very dark place where they're willing to basically do anything yeah um i would posit that you know, family members of murder victims that are gunning to have the murderer be executed are no less sociopathic than the person being executed. I'd agree. And that ties into the death penalty episode we did too. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> even I though in think... that episode I was like kind of arguing for the death penalty. And... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm I, a sociopath. Well, <laughs> it, I, I don't think that that <laughs> like that that solves it doesn't bring anybody back. Like you're not solving the problem by killing. Nobody somebody. expects that, though. I mean, well, no. But then, why even do it to begin with? Like, what? What do you hope to gain? Yeah. I. I, I, I mean, I think they hope feels... to gain the same thing as as what we're talking about here, but it, it just isn't as effective as like. Well. I, an intervention is basically what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. tell people, tell this person how you how they've wronged you, mm-hmm. and try to appeal to their conscience. Yeah. They don't have a conscience. I don't know. Then maybe you got to delve into the other options. But well, those are those those are special cases, and they yeah. do exist. Yeah, but I, I feel like a lot of people are people. Like they have real feelings and real world experiences. And for whatever reason, they're left by the wayside or they feel that way. Um, and what choice do they have? What, what options are available like to make yourself feel better? Well, you know, Oh yeah. Maybe that's it. That's it. Like if, if the whole intervention thing doesn't work, right say they're so far gone into sociopathy psychopath uh, psychopathy uh 
they just don't care. They don't know right from wrong, whatever. No conscience, conscience whatsoever. And then you're like, okay, well, you know, they, that's where you implement the death penalty. Basically what you're doing there is like, you're, I, I, I kind of, I, I kind of want to say something. I mean, we're already demonetized. So <laughs> go ahead. It's controversial, but people, people say suicide is the coward's way out, but it's actually one of the bravest things a person can do to end your own life. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that like, you might really want to die, but you won't do it because you're chicken shit about it. I was chicken shit about it. I really wanted to die. I didn't really like want to do it to myself. But, you know, like if I had done some fucked up shit and being probably not a sociopath, I would actually feel bad about it, but still not like to the point of like doing it myself. Mm -hmm. I would need the state to be like, okay, we're going to just do it for you. Yeah. Well, that's the whole death by cop thing. Y yeah. So like, why not have it be in a more controlled manner? Like have the death penalty on the table, but before you get there, you got to like exhaust every other Avenue. And I, okay. You know, I, I feasibly, you know, I, like, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I feel like there's less destructive options that could happen before. Like, people don't but exhaustive get... you know like try those well you, you don't want to try execution <laughs> um no no i'm saying like your your other options try those first yeah oh absolutely then, you know like yeah sure and, and the only reason society and those people who are suffering don't go in that direction is the stigma attached to mental health issues that people are afraid to talk about things they're afraid to say that i'm feeling suicidal i'm feeling destructive um and they don't want to talk about it but we should be able to talk about it it look look it, it's part of being human you know what That's that a normal thing me. we've got to do an episode on openness like open the uh, the open book philosophy. Oh, like, yeah. Most people would not so nonchalantly talk about wanting to kill themselves like I am right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't hesitate. I don't bat an eye. I'm like, yeah, I've thought about killing myself. Mm -hmm. Lots of time. <laughs> in, in the last week, you know, like, <laughs> it, it comes and goes, you know? Mm -hmm. And that should be okay to talk about. Like, we shouldn't feel ashamed to talk about those things that is a normal thing that's part of being people. yeah it's part of being a human like we go yeah we we deal with difficult things um we feel difficult emotions and it's okay it's fine like, oh yeah. yeah like stigmas yeah we you got to do an episode about stigmas too. Like, mm -hmm. I think I think they're all bullshit. Every one of them. Well, and and I think all of that is connected. Um, yeah. Man, this is going to be a two-parter, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really am oh, yeah. pissed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Close to two hours here. So. Yeah, that's uh, about an hour and a half now. I I, I think we've covered enough. Um, and we're sufficiently demonetized. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we got an email today or yesterday, obvious like phishing email, but it was all like, your videos are violating policy. And for a split second, I was like, oh yeah, whatever. You know, like <laughs> I see this all the time. And then I was like, wait a minute, this looks different. This is like phishing. I was like, okay, yeah. delete. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's awesome yeah uh, well and <laughs> you know if our videos are not violating some kind of community standards 
I would feel like we're not doing a proper video. Yeah. I wasn't feel like one of our best. <laughs> yeah. I feel like all of our best videos are the most demonetized of the bunch. Um, and, and this one is no exception. And that's the uphill battle we have. That's why I stopped advertising, like paying to advertise, because anytime there was a an episode that would really like generate some buzz, advertisement was like, wow, we're no, no, no advertisers are going to want to pay to <laughs> advertise on that topic. Well, and I, hmm. I get it. Like, I mean, you know, if you run the purple pillow company or something like that, and you don't want to. You don't want to rock the boat too much. You want to be. I'm drinking uh, a purple beer. Oh, oh hey, guys. it looks blue to me, but that's okay. Well, I mean, like that's subjective. <laughs> purple to me. Well, you know the the color purple isn't really a color for some cultures. Um, even blue, blue is well, actually true. Blue is what most people would consider purple. Well, in Blue is actually red in some cultures, I think. Um, yeah, it's all over the place. And what's red? Is your red my red? Oh, man. Don't get me started on perception. Who read about red? Oh, shit. Did they read about my red or <laughs> did they read about your red that I read about <laughs> in Red oh. Magazine Yeah, that I read? <laughs> <laughs> Adding an A, deleting an A. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, that. That's a. That's an interesting thing. God, this show is so good. <laughs> we cover all the stuff that like nobody else wants to talk about, <laughs> and we cover it in depth in a way that encourages. Thought. We got to make that restaurant thing happen. Mm-hmm. So I just had this idea that like we could, you know, either do like live on stage or or just stream in a theater. You know, like have our own theater in these restaurants. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. Stream the episode in the theater, and then people go out and sit and eat and have conversations of their own. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh great. man. Yeah, we should totally do that. I love that idea. <laughs> oh man! Wow. I'll head up the uh, uh, the uh, German headquarters, and uh, you can handle things here uh, stateside. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, there's a huge pile of bureaucracy <laughs> behind that. So you know, even uh, more in Germany. Right? <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah. Very much so. Like you would not like Germany. No, I I, I know I would not. <laughs> um, the people, yes, okay, I could totally chill in Germany, but uh, yeah. the government, uh, no, <laughs> deal with that shit. Oh <laughs> hell no! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well this has been uh, a pretty incredible episode. I don't know how we went from the first topic to the last um, and how we wrapped that up, but damn, that was good. It always does kind of come around, like talking about Germany, even. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like somehow we managed to bring it, like wrap it all back up into that package. Hmm. I'll rob old Ross. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we always manage to inject a little bit of red dwarf in there. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could um, show clips of that. Like the one and only episode that got like taken down on our <laughs> channel was the one where we were like, let's do red dwarf clips. Oh, yeah. Which sucks because like we Which were Which is available selling. unedited on ksmvidcast.com. Yep. Go there, ksmvidcast.com. Check it out. Um, Haven't updated it in like six months, but you know. <laughs> eh, 
Uh, it's okay. At least the Red Dwarf one is there. Yeah. Uh, nobody's complaining because nobody's watching anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they will. They will. Oh, man. Well, I have to, I desperately have to take a piss. Me too. So I think it's time to wrap things up. Uh, Cue up the song, DJ. (laughs) You think Lisa will want anything to do with you? (laughs) If I'm the monster in the machine, you're my creator. If I can't ever, no one will. Emotion die here with this betrayal.